with you. But first, I seek the knowing, the truth of nature held within your ark. You want to answer? So I will ask. Answer these questions true, sweet beast, so that your ark may be known and your eye may open. And do choose wisely. Answer from your heart. A handsome and powerful god visits Yesha with the promise to eradicate conflict, disease, and all suffering. In return, he demands a sacrifice, the life of a single young Pan. 
Do you give him what he asks? Now let me think. Oh yes! Your closest friend is about to be wed. It is the day of the ceremony, and all are happy. But for you... For you have learned that your friend's betrothed has had a liaison. If you tell them, it will ruin their grand day. If you don't, it may lead to later grief. Do you stay silent and enjoy the party? Or tell the truth and ruin the day? I see your wheels turning, sweet beast. You are part of a group of druids who have been taken hostage by a warlord. One of the warlord soldiers succumbs to your charms and says he will help you escape. However, the others must be left behind to die, though all have done nothing. Do you abandon your fellow hostages, or do you face death together? I see. Your daughter has been killed. The murderer is arrested, and after many years, they are sentenced to death. Before the sentence is carried out, they come to you and explain that they are truly sorry, and they ask for your forgiveness. Nothing you say will change their sentence, nor bring your daughter back. Do you forgive them? It's not every day a question determines the course of your destiny. Or is it? You lead a mountain expedition that is stranded in the lofty reaches. Your retinue includes a family of six with an inherited nutrient deficiency. One individual's kidneys contain large amounts of this nutrient. The family can be saved if you remove this individual's kidneys to extract the nutrients. The would-be donor is opposed to this plan. They will not die, but their health will be forever compromised. Do you save the family, or do you let the family suffer by sparing the unwilling donor? I see. You have chosen your path, sweet beast. Your will is strong. The fire of the Ravager's eye glows within you. In the arc of every being, there are two eyes. We may see out of either, but most favor one over the other. The Ravager's eye is dynamic, driven, and endlessly hungry. Yet for all its power, its vision is clouded. The eye of the Ravager rarely sees beyond its own satiation. Like an animal chasing its tail, it knows no rest. The Doe's eye sees only what is before it. The gift of the Doe is subtle, easily missed. It is a most mysterious presence inside oneself, conferring power without force just as the doe itself cannot be sought, nor tracked, nor hunted. By answering true, sweet beast, you give me a wink, and now the gifts of your dominant eye will be open to you. Hmm. Would you care to hear a tale? It is about those who see as you do. I will tell you the tale of Belgoth, who also saw with the Ravager's eye. Belgoth lived in the era before the Root first bedeviled the pan and nipped at their hairy hooves. Belgoth was Drinkmaster of Flint, a village beyond the hill. One day, when Belgoth was traveling far afield, Flint was raided by bandits. They laid waste to every soul, old and young. Belgoth returned to find everyone he cared for watering the soil with their blood. Well, Belgoth tapped his store of spirit, filling Growler and Jeroboam by the gaggle, and he hoofed himself to my grove. Where lies the bandit's lair, he demanded. 
His eye was open, and I had no reason to deceive him. At my direction, Belgov tintinabulated to their den. There, he smashed a jug on his horns and struck flint with steel, and Belgov was reborn as a flaming figure of vengeance. He charged into the bandit's lair, hoof over hand, and in his enemy's bosom, the remaining stock of spirit took spark with explosive result. Some consider this a waste of life, for could not Belgoth have traveled elsewhere and rebuilt what he had lost? But I'll tell you this. Flynn's sister village stood free from bandit attacks for many years after that day. Belgov's blaze of glory saved it. He died with the Ravager's eye open and no mercy in his heart. Terrible waste to drink, though. Before we go any further, I must ask, I sense you carrying something. Something that belonged to my sister. <gasps> that ring. Why do you have it? It is my sister's ring. This can only mean one thing. You killed her. Ah, the mortal misunderstands. What you destroyed was not my sister. Not as I knew her. The root had... consumed her. She suffered in that form. You have freed her on behalf of all of my sisters. Thank you. Keep her ring and treasure it with our gratitude. Oh, oh it has been long since I felt this relief. Dare I say joy? Now, what can I do for you? You stand before Mirdra, spirit of the natural world, daughter of stem and stream. My sisters and I are the glorious weavers of all wild beauty. When mountain, spring, and sturdy tree trunk take your breath, sweet beast, that is us. That is our blessing. An immeasurable number. Mother Stem and Mother Stream rely on us to sprawl and grow. Though we don't often commune with beasties such as you. Not in this age. Especially not since what happened to Kaula. A tragedy, beast. Tragedy most cruel. Kaula was fascinated by mortals. By your lives and stories. Unlike most of us, she made herself no secret. And you worshipped her with your short lives. Even built her a house. A temple, you called it. The Root found her there. We godlings are not easily unwoven, however. And it slew her not. But perhaps it would be better if it had. For what remains is no longer the sister I knew. But we hold happy thoughts. Regret only wastes one life with another. Is there something else we can talk about? By day, a dappled glade of emerald branch and golden leaf, carpeted by downy moss. By night? By night, sweet beast. The trees bewitched the lost and inebriated. Or so it was before this age of extermination. How I long to return to play. This age, for me, holds only decay. The moon is power, beast. A superior moon is potent. A blood moon, infinitely more so. The moon hunts close to Yesha. When he does, his pull on both the tides and your mortal instincts is more intense. And when the Lady Sun joins, 
The concoction is cosmic. The ancients called it the Wounded Brightness. The Blood Moon heralds the beginning of an end. None know. It changes from age to age. But it is always something big, sweet beast. The Blood Moon promises a show of shows. Now, have I yet sated your hunger for knowledge? Or is there more, you would ask? May the Ravager's eye guide you to glory. Here we go.
Okay, this is it. Hmph! <laughs> 